Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Pravin Gordon released the medium-term budget policy statement amid student protests and against the backdrop of political upheaval and even a fraud charge against him. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the highlights. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What were some of the key themes of this year's mini-budget? Well, the overarching theme was uh, one of what they call measured consolidation. So we know that we've got lower growth, we know that we've got re lower revenue collection, and those figures were confirmed today. So a growth of only 0.5%, the Treasury is saying, for 2016, instead of around that 1% level, or 09 that they announced in February, which uh, is slightly above what the Reserve Bank is forecasting, at about 0.4%, and quite well above what the IMF is uh, saying, it's sort of flat or zero growth, 0.1% growth. So it's on the ambitious side, but still very weak growth and also announcement that our revenue collections are starting to kind of take the strain that everyone was expecting um, with, you know, uh, with the lower growth trajectory, which means lower tax revenue intake. So the, uh, the, the, the announcement really was about we're going to have this m a balanced approach to consolidation because there's going to be slippage in our deficit um, at the consolidation. Our deficit uh, is go going to be wider. Uh, than was predicted in February. In fact, it's going to be wider for the next three years than uh, was also predicted in February at about, for, for the, this year, at about 3.4%. Uh, and it will only sort of get to the 2.5% level in three years' time. So, and, and there, w there was an initial view that we could accelerate that. But definitely the, the headwinds are against um, uh, the finance minister and the South African economy. and you know, the fiscal authorities in trying to, to keep that, uh, that budget balance, especially as you mentioned in your intro around fresh demands um, all around. Uh, society uh, needs are still great and one of the most vocal of those needs is coming in the form of these student protests and uh, there has to be some accommodation for the fact that uh, the, the higher education minister has announced zero free fee increases for a certain band of students for those whose families earn less than 600,000 rand a year. And obviously expansion to the, um, the funding of the financial aid to students that's also been announced for, for next year. In fact, b besides the growing servicing of uh, South Africa's debt, um, the, the post-school education budget is the fastest growing item on South Africa's budget. But um, Nevertheless, it's not what the students were hoping for. Um, I think they were hoping against hope for uh, immediate sort of fee f uh, free education. South Africa doesn't have the resources, but there was an olive branch uh, put out by the finance minister saying, stop the violence, let's get the academic program sorted for 2016, let's not put people's lives on hold or at risk, um, and let's start engaging in some of these technical uh, discussions around how we can you know, soften the blow for a lot of families that are already struggling, a lot of students that are already struggling. He said there's some, been some very interesting technical proposals that have come across the, the Treasury's desk and that he would like to have an environment where you could have a, a rational discussion, a sit down, a round table, because this is not an overnight sort of quick fix. The, the budget is stretched uh, to the limits um, and there's many other competing needs in society. So he's really made an appeal but while he was making that appeal, the, uh, the uh, students were protesting quite vociferously outside. And we know across a number of campuses, there has been violent protests. Even though what Bladen Zamande, the Minister of Higher Education, was at the briefing uh, associated with this mini-budget, basically said that 80% of uh, universities are still at class and are getting ready to uh, you know, write exams. But the, the, there's high-profile universities where there's still a lot of trouble, a, little, a lot of anxiety, and uh, people are going through a very, very difficult time on those campuses. So on the whole, I think the theme is this measured and balanced consolidation roadmap um, with these other concurrent themes that are coming through uh, around higher education and some of the other demands on the budget that need to be filled. There were also some interesting statements regarding electricity and ESCOM. Yes, uh, in, I think there was a lot of interest in, uh, in, in this mini-budget around um, whether uh, the RPP program was still on track. Now, Treasury is a key uh, participant in this, in the sense that they are with the Department of Energy. They run the RPP office that um, 
oversees the IPP program. So they procure um, the, the solar and the wind and the coal and in future the gas to power projects on behalf of uh, government and Eskom is the buyer of that. So what happens is um, uh, also the National Treasury guarantees or backs um, that buying ability of Eskom at the moment there's some 200 billion rand in what they call contingent liabilities sitting with Treasury basically saying that's what we're prepared to, uh, to give to if Eskom fails to deliver on payments to the IPPs. But we also know that the Eskom has been very resistant to uh, the, RP, uh, the especially the renewable IPPs in recent months and have held back from signing one PPA uh, power purchase agreement in particular and has indicated they're not keen to sign the, the bid window 4.5 and the so-called expedited round. I think Pravin Gordon tried to put a nail in uh, a, lid in the, a lid on that and announced that uh, there are 30 something additional projects ready to go, that these are, these are in, uh, good and wholesome projects for the country and should uh, proceed and will uh, crowd in additional uh, foreign and domestic investment into the electricity sector and basically saying that the, the renewable IPP program is here to stay and will be expanded in future. However, he also announced um, in his, uh, his it wasn't in the statement, but it was in his speech that that government has agreed that Eskom should take the lead role in the new nuclear procurement program, which is something that they've been lo lobbying for and have won uh, that right. They, 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 I think the feeling was uh, if Eskom's going to be the owner operator, Eskom felt they should also be the procurer, not the DOE, and that seems to be the way um, we're going to now proceed with nuclear. Obviously, the regulator has to give a concurrence to that DOE decision to cede that responsibility for the power plants to Eskom. In fact, DOE also have to cede responsibility for the multi-purpose reactor, as I understand it, to Nexa. And so there will have to be some processes around that. And I think, again, it was reiterated both by Finance Minister Gordon as well as his deputy, uh, Jonas, that this, these, this has to proceed at a pace and scale that South Africa can afford. And uh, it's not a total risk-free type uh, um, a procurement for Treasury, even if Eskom is going to be taking the lead. And even if Eskom is saying that its balance sheet over the next few years, I think in the next 10 years, gonna, is going to be much more resilient and much more able to, to absorb the nuclear program. So uh, I think he, he made a, a point about around the IPPs that this is a good program for South Africa and should proceed and Eskom needs to you know, realize their role. Their role is one of buyer and not one of policy setting. And the policy says that RPP program must proceed and it should proceed. We now have to wait and see how Eskom responds to that. But I think that the utility will be happy that there's again, com there is confirmation for the leadership role in nuclear. Do you think enough has been done for South Africa to avoid a downgrade of its ratings in December? I think that on a quantitative level, things are worse than February. So we've got lower growth, a wider deficit, lower revenues, and uh, you know debt that's still, although it's you know there's definitely a, um, initiatives to try and rein in that debt, um, still a, a very I mean it's two trillion uh, rand on our uh, that uh, that the treasury oversees now in total. So it's a massive amount of debt and massive amounts of interest payments. So we need to show that that's going to peak and start draining that back in. Uh, and, and then, of course, on the good positive side, I think moves around, which I didn't mention earlier, one of the bigger themes was is also sort of reinforcing the expenditure ceiling, trying to make savings where possible, and uh, actually um, not only reinforcing it, but uh, lowering that expenditure ceiling once again. Uh, that's, the, that's the message. And then there's also this um, view that we're going to raise these additional taxes of over 40, 40 billion rand over the next two years, which uh, I suppose on the one hand shows that we're trying to hold a, a very credible line on fiscal consolidation uh, with the sort of lower expenditure and the higher taxes. But of course, when you have higher taxes, it's a, it's a dampening effect on growth. And that for many of the rating agencies is the big problem. South Africa is just not growing anywhere near where it should be growing in order to deal with its social and economic uh, challenges. So on the quantitative, pure quantitative level, it, we look like we're in a more difficult space than we were in February. We avoided junk in June, December's uh, looming, 
and I think uh, what's going to be key is if the rating agencies cast their eye to some of the other qualitative uh, issues around um, the way there seems to be a, a rising cooperation between particularly the Treasury and, big and business around some departments in business, for instance, small business, the small business fund, um, whether we see some real action in, in clearing some of these regulatory and policy uncertainties. Is the MPRDA going to get through Parliament? Is it, how long is that going to take? Are we going to deal with the once in part, always in part uh, issue that's been sort of hovering over uh, the mining industry and actually all industries need some certainty on how empowerment's going to be viewed. So there's a lot of uncertainty still. And then of course there's the political noise and the, uh, the political noise I think at the moment is tilting us t towards junk. Um, so if there's so we need to see signs on the qualitative side that um, uh, business and government, not just the Treasury, but government as a whole, is embracing that partnership. And then on the political side, we have to see uh, a much uh, better, less hostile environment for people that are trying to, um, you know, uh, as Pravin Gordon said, an inclusive growth agenda where no one is left behind. And people that are really driving that agenda should be the ones that are, th you know, starting to take the lead in society. But there's still this uh, pushback from vested interest, as he calls them. Others call them the predatory elite. And uh, if that fight continues to play out as it has over the last few weeks and months, then I think junk is going to be hard to avoid. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.